Welcome. We're on the red couch with Deborah Zimmerman, the executive director of Women Make Movies, a nonprofit New York based film organization that supports women filmmakers since 1972. During her tenure, it has grown into the largest distributor of films by and about women in the world, and their internationally recognized production assistance program has helped hundreds of women get their films made. Films from Women Make Movies programs have won prizes at the last six Sundance Film Festivals and have been nominated or won Academy Awards in five of the last six years. Deborah, I am thrilled to have you on the red couch. Thanks so much. I'm happy to be here. Well, I love your two passions <laughs> also, feminism and media. Right. And I'd love to just hear a little bit about how you first, first, first got started, like when you were just little. Oh, my goodness. Um, well, I actually was an AV nerd in junior high school, and I was one of those people that, that rolled around the projectors to the classroom showing <laughs> film strips and 16 millimeter cameras, never thinking that that was going to have anything to do with the rest of my life. Um, then I was in college and I was studying, I was studying, um, I thought I was going to be a lawyer, actually. So I was huh. studying English literature. And I had this one friend who somehow convinced me that art was the most important thing in the world. And I knew that I couldn't draw, so I figured, film, okay. I was also studying women's studies, and I wanted to do something that had to do with film and something that had to do with women, and there was Women Make Movies. Um, and that was the perfect marriage of my two passions. So you went to see a film at Women Make Movies. I did. And I what did. did that do for you? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, you know, back then, we're talking in the 1970s, there were only a handful of women who had made films. You know, in fact, one of the things that I always think about is that I actually remember the first time I ever saw a film by a woman. Now, mm -hmm. most people, most certainly most young people today could never, ever imagine that because they see films on TV and in the theaters all the time that are by women directors. But... Um, it, the first documentary I ever saw was a film about homeless women called mm. Shopping Bag Ladies. Mm. And it made me realize that homeless women, the shop, shopping bag ladies were homeless women. It was, it was, it gave me a totally different view of these women that I'd always just kind of passed by on the street. Mm. Years later, I figured out though that the very first film that I ever saw by a woman director was a film called The Trouble with Angels by Ida Lupino. And she was one of two directors that actually worked, women directors, that worked in Hollywood from 1940 until 1960. Um, and the film, interestingly enough, was one of my favorite films. And it was about two girls in a convent um, with Rosalind Russell. And they always got into trouble. And that's why it was called <laughs> Trouble with Angels. And, you know, years later, I kind of looked at it and realized, yeah, sure, that was a film by a woman. It was about girls. It was about girls having their own agency. It was about girls getting into trouble. That was my kind of film. Yeah. <laughs> But when you saw the movie with women, that women make uh, movies the other, saw. Yes, yes, yes. Was okay, that, so, that was in a barn or yes, something? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So, okay, so I had, so I was interested in film. I was interested in women. I had this wonderful professor in college um, named Alice Fix. Um, and Alice said to me, Debbie, you really need to, you need to find out about women make movies and you need to go to this weekend. And it was a women's weekend of culture, art, music, and women make movies was there showing a documentary in a barn. It was this enormous barn, and it was full of women. There was mm -hmm. no men there. Mm -hmm. It was the first time I ever had this experience of seeing a film that actually reflected my own life, that mm -hmm. reflected what was going on for me. It wasn't about glamorous women. It wasn't about the good mother or the bad mother or the, the you know the blonde or the. T it was really about things that I cared about. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw these women up there showing this film, and I said, "Wow! If I could do this with my life, I would be happy." Um, and I ended up doing that with my life, so I am really happy. <laughs> that is so fun. I love the story about how you, at first, were a little hesitant. Yeah, because it was so important to me. Yeah. You know, I was living in New York, and I um, was always a bike rider, so I rode my bike for three months up and down the street where Women Make <laughs> Movies office was before I had the nerve to walk in the door and say, I just want to be an intern here. So they said, okay, come back for an interview. And I, again, was so nervous that I came late to the interview. <laughs> and they almost didn't give me the internship. Um, but I said, I promise, I'll be there on time. 
all the time. And I spent months actually reorganizing the files, being a production assistant, doing just anything so that I could get in the door and really learn um, about the organization. Yeah. So then you left. Yeah, I did. Because when I came to the organization, I wanted to be a filmmaker. That was my goal. Yeah. I, had, I remember I was in my uh, apartment, my first apartment, which actually stole my apartment. I've lived in the same apartment for more than 30 years. But I was like writing on the floor, I was lying on the floor, and I was writing my plan. I had a plan, you know, and a fi I had a five-year plan. At the end of the five years, I was going to have made a documentary. Well, I was so lucky because I found Women Make Movies and because Women Make Movies gave me the opportunity mm -hmm. to make a, a documentary about battered women that I finished my plan, in a, uh, my five-year plan, in a year and a half. <laughs> Not too many people do that. <laughs> I know. It was, it was pretty amazing. I was very lucky. And but, so I left and started working on other films and worked as a production assistant on a film that Robert Duvall directed, actually. Oh. Um, but what I found was that it wasn't very satisfying. You know, I, I always said I felt like Robert Duvall's toe. You know, like <laughs> I wasn't even a hand. I wasn't a leg. I was a toe. I was just so... It, it, I, was, I was unimportant. My work was not all that mm, important. Mm -hmm. When I was working with Women Make Movies, we were working on really important issues, like, like battered women, like homeless women, like rape and, and violence against women in general. And, you know, I... I realized that I, I not only wanted to make films, but I, I wanted to change the world in some way. Mm -hmm. And working on as a production assistant on a feature film just wasn't doing it. So um, I actually made my way back to, to Women Make Movies, and at the time, the organization was having a lot of trouble. We had lost our funding from the federal government. Reagan had just come into power and mm -hmm. decided that women have accomplished everything they need to accomplish. They don't need funding anymore. Uh, we lost our funding, and uh, there was really just incredible upheaval. So I, I, myself and another woman um, named Lydia Dean Pilcher, I'm very proud. Lydia is now a very, very successful producer. Oh. She produces Mira Nair's films oh, wow. and some of Michael Moore's films. But at the time, she was a grad student at NYU. Uh, she and I volunteered to come in the office and see if there was some way that we could keep the organization going. Um, because there was a community meetings and people said, no, we don't want women to make movies to close. It was really important to us when we came out of college and when we wanted to learn how to make films. Um, and we realized that even though we had very little staff, we don't know staff, people were still calling us and saying, we want to rent this film. We, we want to see this film. And even though the focus of the organization was on production and workshops, it was really the distribution of the films that was the most important. So so that's when the whole thing shifted. To it shifted, yeah. We realized that to, to rebuild the organization, we, we should do it focused on distribution, not so much on production. Um, and I actually had an amazing experience <laughs> where I, learned, I found a situation that was a win, win, win. Not just a double win, but a triple win. We had this film. It was about women in prison. We created a flyer. Actually, Lydia created the flyer. I was working during the day. I had a day job and a foundation, and I used their Xerox machine. Thank you, Clark Foundation, um, to Xerox the flyer. I used their postage meter also. Thank you again. Um, we sent this flyer out to uh, grantees of the organization that were working on prison reform. Huh. And as a result of sending the flyer out, uh, six organizations institutions uh, rented the film and two bought the film. Wow. It was $500 for each film. We made money. The mm -hmm. filmmaker made money uh, through royalties. And these organizations that really needed to see a film about women in prison bought this film and right. were able to use it in their community and, and cultural and educational work. And I realized this is tremendous. What an opportunity to be able to do something where three parts all succeed at the same time. Um, and I was hooked. And that actually, I have to say, was one of those moments that really changed my life. Because rather than make films, I decided I wanted to really work on getting them out into the world. Um, the other reason is because when I made this documentary on battered women, that's all we could be focused on for a year and a half. It was like living, eating, sleeping, drinking. Really, you know. And one, one issue wasn't enough for me. You know, I wanted to work on more than one thing. I didn't want to just work on that. I wanted to work on, you know, issues facing women in Africa and issues facing women in prison and, you know, all kinds of different things. And that's really what I'm able to do now. 
Let's I want to talk about all those things. Okay. And we will. Okay. Thank you for joining us for the first half. Stay tuned for the second half with Deborah Zimmerman. Stay tuned for part two of this interview on the red couch.